drive from the community of Speyside to Crown Point, a flight from Tobago to Piaco, Trinidad, and a subsequent drive to this venue in St. Clair is what the young men from Speyside High have gone through today to get here. Currently standing at number 11, they hope to climb the SSFL Premiership table. They face an institution with the intention of reclaiming their status as a powerhouse. Coming off of a 10-0 victory and sitting in fourth position, Malik Secondary understand the importance of every game moving forward. This is a tournament where underdogs have turned into champions, legends have journeyed, and joy and sorrow live in the same house. This is the SSFL Premiership Division, Malik Secondary versus Speyside High here at St. Mary's College Sport Grounds. Before we go any further, let's look at the weather that these young men will be playing under. The temperature is now 32 degrees Celsius. Wind speeds at 12 kilometers per hour and the humidity index is 65%. My name is Hans Devines and joining me on the pitch, we have James Saunders and Brent Sancho. Listen, the weather is not perfect, but also we get ready for Issa Schoolboy football in Jamaica. Magati High versus Roger Clark High. The game is in play right now and it's happening at Stets. And St. Elizabeth Technical High versus Monroe College is happening a little later. Gentlemen, another match day, another one to look forward to. Yeah, certainly another match to want to look forward to, especially Malik Senior Comprehensive. You did mention, of course, that they are starting to get back to where they were before. Yeah. This is a team that's been talked and touted, touted a lot here in Trinidad and Tobago. We've heard a lot of rumors. We get to see them here live for the very first time. James? Yeah, well, Speedside, they've been a bit sluggish at the start of this competition. Yeah. They've come a long way. And when we talk about a long way, they're coming from a long way in Tobago and then taking a flight to come across to Trinidad. It's a true away fix there for them, coming up against the Malik team, who, you know, as Brent mentioned, are back to their glorious best. It's only been three games, but a lot have been said about this Malik team, mm -hmm. a team that has won five national titles. Titles, let's not forget, yeah. and has been one of the most dominant team of the 90s. Well, when we talk about last match day, Speyside would have actually lost to St. Anthony's College. And when we look back at the results from last match day, also we would have had that big win for Malik Secondary against Shagornas North, that 10-0 victory. Presentation College would have lost to Sawa North Secondary. Queens Royal College would have defeated Trinity College East. Naparima College, assuming their dominance against Pleasantville Secondary School. And... Other than that, let's look at some of the other results as well that happened in Premiership Round 3. St. Mary's College, Arima North Secondary. We see Arima North Secondary doing some great work in this competition this quietly, time around. Yeah, quietly coming up and doing some good work. The Mokarapo Derby, we brought you that one live. And Fatima College defeated East Mokarapo 5-0. St. Benedict's College, their first win away against Bishop High School Tobago. And that Malik Secondary score that we spoke about earlier. This brings us to our current standings. Gentlemen, what do you all make of the table? Well, when you look at the top of the table, of course, you look at the undefeated teams, Naparima College, Fatima, San Juan North, secondary to name a few, uh, certainly dominating. When you look at the, the goals that they've scored, I know, I know we're touching the goals, of course, given up, but the goals that they have accumulated so far, it shows to some dominance and maybe a little bit of disparity as it relates to the league. Yeah. Now, at the top of the table, we speak about goals, but also on the bottom, James, let's talk about the goals there. Yeah, we've had a Ferrari start and, uh, well, a Nissan V14 ending because you look at Pleasantville Secondary and Bishop High, it is still early and the points are still very, very close. But what I want you to look at is the goal difference, minus 22. That is a lot of goals to concede. Yeah. And uh, there are In some teams games. in this comp. Yeah. Just three games. Wow. <laughs> just the three games. It just started. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, guys, what do we make of Space Side High? Let's talk about Space Side a little bit. What can we expect from them today in this matchup? I think, as, as James rightfully highlighted, the trip, because you have to think about, of course, preparing themselves for the game. I looked at the young boys in the Jerry Panton stands here at St. Mary's College grounds. You have to wonder when did they get here? How do you relax and get yourselves prepared for a game? It's certainly not the type of preparation you would want for a team. And you'd have to think that when you look at the, the table historically, that Tobago team struggle 
when they come here to Trinidad, and that has to be one of the reasons. Let's hear about Malik now. Yeah, I think in terms of Malik, uh, they've got the shorter bus ride to get here, just a few minutes away. In fact, uh, you can take a warm up coming to this ground here for Malik yeah. Secondary. It's very close. It's a school full of pedigree, uh, as Brent mentioned. One of the most, you know, in fact, uh, arguably the most dominant school of the 90s. This is a school that has history. It yeah. has uh, some remarkable past players. I'm standing next to one, Brent Sancho, True. right here, that have went on to play World Cup football. They know how to win, and they've managed to assemble a team of youngsters this season that many people feel is a very, perhaps the most talented bunch that they've had in the last decade. And with the right support around them in terms of the past players and the history of the school, I think uh, Malik should be on the right road. Well, that's the fixture that we're bringing you here, Speyside versus Malik. But let's look at some of the other fixtures that will be played today. Shagona's North Secondary still hoping for that win. They hope to get that win against Presentation College. East Mokarap will take on top of the table, Naparima College. Fatima College take on Pleasantville Secondary. Of course, this game that we're going to be bringing you, Queens Royal College go up against undefeated Sawa North Secondary. St. Anthony's College going up against St. Mary's Battle of the Saints. And Arima North Secondary against St. Benedict's. That is a fixture I'm interested in seeing. Mount watering. Of, of course, uh, the stuttering start by St. Benedict's College winning their last fixture. But we, we still see a lot of quality within the St. Benedict's team. So they cannot be counted out by any stretch of the imagination. And you're right, Arima North has put in together some very impressive resu uh, results so far. Well, we also have that Bishop's Trinity East match happening as well today. But right now, let's hear from the coach of Speyside High, Mr. Akko George, and what he had to say pre-season. The boys are really excited. From since the word go, the guys came out in their numbers. We had over 35 boys screening to get involved in the program. We started earlier this year because Last season, we were kind of underprepared and as the season progressed, that's when we actually felt our match legs under us. And this season, we decided that, here what, we can't fall into the trap as we fell into last season and we want to start the work off early so we could hit the ground running. The core is basically the same as, as last season with a few changes on the fringe. One of the biggest challenges that we experience and we will continue to experience is the travel, but we relish that challenge, right? It's something that we signed up for and we can't really complain about it. Part of development is to learn how to win and we at Space at High School, we pride ourselves on being successful in everything that we do. So we come into the tournament trying to be one of the best teams and be successful in it. George is saying that it took a while to get their footing in last season and they're still trying to find it this time around. Yeah, it is It is a struggle and, and consistency, which I'm, I'm happy he brought up. We heard the same comments from uh, Lynch, the technical director, last season as well about consistency, the travel and some of the obstacles that they, they face normally. And it's funny, we're not talking football here, on the field. Yeah. We're talking everything else outside of it. So it shows you that has had an impact with these teams coming to Trinidad. Well, speaking of impact, Malik Secondary, they're definitely here to make an impact this season. It's clear. And obviously that would have a lot to do with their coach, James. Yeah, he He's a, he's, a, he's a very positive fellow. I listened to some of the stuff that he, he spoke about recently. He's a man who instills faith in these boys. He's a, he, he works on the mental aspect of the game, which is often a, a quite neglected aspect of the game. And I, and I think, uh, you know, when you've got a good leader, it reflects and goes down into the core of your bunch. And I think uh, they, they've got a great leader in him. In that well, part. let's hear from their leader, Coach Bartholomew. The vibes in the camp is excellence, love, family oriented, peace, you know, you can't wait, they're, ex they're real excited to play this football, this football right now, I wish they could have started last month, you know, everybody on the edge just waiting for that whistle to blow, to kick off, you know, because I can't wait to hold the trophy. I brought in a psychiatrist last year. And we had to say we relate and talk and you know with us go with the youths, you know the brain, you know the block that's want to be pulling some of them. So you know we work on that which was most important. You know, through Christ we work on it and we bring it through the development we are never winning and that was so I can't explain. One of our biggest challenges last season was the preparation for the football. We started the league and then they took away the points because the season was so short. So we had us a fight. That alone was something by itself. True Christ, nothing is impossible. 
keeping them positive, Coach Bartholomew, and something that would definitely keep the boys of Malik positive is that 10-0 victory over Shook Hornets North. James, your thoughts? Yeah, I scored one goal, I'm over the moon. He scored 10. <laughs> Fantastic achievement from Malik. Goals always get you pumped up, no matter. You can win 1-0, you can win 2-0. People say a win is a win, but when you get big numbers on the board, it instills confidence in your team, and I think uh, it's a Malik team that has shown, importantly, that they can score goals. Defensively, though, that's where the questions will be asked late in the season. All right, Brent, just quickly, I know you're a fellow coach, but what are the coaches saying about Malik? No, it's, uh, it's obviously they're the talk of the town, and you have to mention that he's doing this on very limited resources. So uh -huh. you have to give coach, uh, coach I call him Chun, give him that respect for what he's been able to do with this Malik team. And we're looking forward to see what they can do today. Well, if you want to stay in tune with all the secondary schools football league action, as well as the Issa schoolboy football action in Jamaica, all you have to do is download the Sportsmax app, view and enjoy and stay up to date. When we come back around, kick off here at St. Anthony's College Grounds, Malik Secondary going up against Speyside High. The officials are ready and we are ready to bring you the action live here on Sportsmax. SFL Premier Division. Well, looking at the clock, it says it's time for kickoff here at Serpentine Road in Port of Spain as Malik Secondary gets set to host the boys from Deep Tobago, Speyside High Secondary. Hello everybody, welcome to Sportsmax coverage of the Secondary Schools Football League. My name is James Saunders, I'm joined by Brent Sancho and we roll out the rest of the cast. The boys in blue, Malik Secondary, just two miles away from this ground here in the Belmont area or Speyside, their commute has been quite a distance. Just about an hour drive away from Crown Point International Airport in Tobago. 
20-minute flight to Trinidad and Tobago and a 30-minute drive to the capital. That's what the boys in yellow had to endure today for this fixture. Malik secondary have been good so far in the secondary schools football league after being promoted just two seasons ago where they made their first real appearance in the premiership division of secondary school football. Make no mistake though, the five-time secondary school champions in total dominating the 90s including four back-to-back -back league titles spanning from 1992. Brent Sancho is in the conversation as well, a former Malik boy and uh, this fixed here enticing on paper but maybe not so much in quality. Yeah, you have to wonder what type of quality we would see today. Certainly, as we mentioned in the build-up to this game, uh, we talked a lot about uh, the possibilities that Malik would have. We, we talk a lot about uh, what is being said here in Trinidad and Tobago about this Malik team uh, from coaches and, and persons in the sport that would have seen them play uh, and uh, how well they have done so far. And as you mentioned, James, yourself, possibly a team that could take them back to the glory days. All the formal introductions, meeting with the match officials in this one. Speaking of officials, let's get introduced. Nikolai Nairon will take charge in the middle. Caleb Wales of World Cup fame and Kurt Charles will be the two assistants while Jason O'Connor will act as the fourth official. Shake of the hands of the captains. And the boys assume their battle position. Just a second, we will introduce you to who's on the roster today. Starting with Speyside High School, Malik Secondary in fact, with Akeem James, Malachi Woodley among the names to look at. Look out for Jalen Matthews, he's been good. Joshanti Daniel and Oba Samuels will provide some support while Anthony Bartholomew sits in the dugout. Well, when you look at the team formation, Woodley uh, will be the anchor in the middle of the park. Worrell, a busy man up front, I expect him Sorry, oh, Samuel, the man up front, expect him to cause some problems. Well, they're dressed in yellow. And these are the fellows that will stand out for Speyside High School. Makaya Taylor will be the man to beat in goal. He's been good. Lennox Eastman will be one of the cogs in midfield. Look out for that name, Raquel May Phillip. He's got a big name and a big reputation as well. And Nickel Williams, while Akko George is the coach. Well, the familiar 4 4 2 formation. Campbell dropping a bit deep, playing in that false nine. Daniel would provide the width along with Phillips on the left side. Oh, just a slight precipitation preceded this match. Just dampening the outfield, but it is flush. Nice green outfield here at St. Mary's Ground, Serpentine Road. Usually the home of St. Mary's College, but today it will be Malik against Speyside Secondary as Nikolai Nairon gets us ready and set for action. Just find it, tuning some adjustments. The referee Nikolai Nairon, of course, one of the top premier referees here in Trinidad and Tobago, ensuring that the playing surface is cleared. Just out of your picture, the substitutes just getting into position. And that is exactly why he has the lead to start. The boys are ready, though. They're set. They want to get this game on the way. Well, the goalkeeper for Malik Secondary wearing a yellow top. So that is a part of the consideration in the mind of that man, Nikolai Nairon. So he will have to wear a bib just to ensure that he stands out for the rest of the players. But a good time, though, Brent, to talk about the keys for this match. Yeah, I think from a space side perspective, it has to be about keeping compact and keeping discipline. Certainly in the first 10, 15 minutes or so, they do not want to go under and give themselves a hole to dig out of. From a Malik uh, senior competitor, they want to be expansive in their play. They want to be able to spread this team, this space side team out, and of course, try to get them uh, to chase and, and run around more than they would probably want to. We talked about the trip coming here to Trinidad to, be able to Trinidad may have some impact on them. So it's kickoff here at Serpentine Road. And the boys in yellow have the first bit of possession. Have played the lion's share of their matches across in the sister aisle, making the trip today to Trinidad and Tobago to take on a Malik team who 
sits pretty right now in the standings. Of course, uh, you can't forget that 10-0 victory that they got early in the season, so they can score goals. I think even if you look at the one loss that uh, they had in the season, James, it was against Presentation College, but uh, you have to put an asterisk next to it. They did play a lot of that fixture with 10 men. Well, can come forward here. 1v1, he's gotten Let's past go. his man. He's done well. Looking for options. He will try to find one at the far door, but maybe not the right option that time. I think the idea was right. I think the execution was wrong. Just a, a bit too much purchase on that kick. Maybe needed to really guide it across the goal. It was some bit of support in the back post that was attentive to it, but uh, it didn't come across. Yo, trying to play out of the back dangerously. Very dangerous, especially with the high press of Malik. Lost it in a bad area and just didn't sink in time. <laughs> Not a bad effort though. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good shot. Again, you know, there's always a lot of conversation about playing out of the back. I, I think you have to recognize when there is pressure on and, and a team is pressuring you high up the park, sometimes you have to go long. And I, I think a good friend some space, I'd have recognized that. And now decided to go a bit direct. This is long, searching. Find a blue head and what a good bit of skill there, getting out of the dangerous area. But it's back with Malik. Ferdinand tries to get it forward, loses out. Space side will try to exploit the opportunity to get forward this time. And it's a, in a good area. And uh, just doing enough to get it away from his opposite number. It's already speed side showing that they can attack quite directly. Not sure what his thoughts might have been on that, but they won themselves a throw deep in the opposition half. And they've won themselves good tickets. Front row. This is long. And... Uh, Comfortably dealt with by Malik, but not convincingly. Will be space side yet again, trying from distance. <laughs> well, had the right idea. The execution again, lacking very wide of the mark. Well, new addition to his uniform, the goalkeeper for space side. Had, of course, a change for the bib. Over his top, early in the fixed year. Well, find the head of a yellow shirt and they will battle for this in the middle. Maybe a push. Not spotted. Play on, says the referee. Malik will charge forward to Matthews. And, uh, well, just a push this time that was picked up. It's a foul against the Jalen Matthews. Both teams have struggled for fluid, fluidity in the early stages. Yeah, fluidity and, and a bit of quality as well. We've seen a couple errant passes and a lot of lofted long passes like that one, which has made the game rather scrappy in the first opening exchanges. I think as well, James, with both teams trying to press uh, the, the, the other it's made it a bit awkward and uh, players haven't had time to settle on the football and we've seen already uh, a lot of of course exchange of possession because of that will be a throw for the boys from speed side deep inside the malik area no real shots are uh, troubling either goalkeeper so far well oh, just lost his balance there will come again with it it's one in the area could fall anywhere and Malik finally gets it away from danger well could be anybody's ball and it falls fortunately for the boys in blue will push forward and uh, well just a bit of a dink there there is a indentation running across the field you can just see it behind him that line Paul just hitting that and spinning away from him Well, they're still searching for some flow to this match. Has bubbled around, but neither team has really been able to get it down on the carpet so far. 
Er ist Batiste. This is searching, aim for Daniel. Couldn't find him. And Space Side will come away with it. Looking for Space. Movement ahead of him. Attacking the Space and couldn't find the pass into George. He's making the run in behind. Well, that's a handle ball, not called, and play will continue. Batiste. Well, this is long. This is. Exciting for a second, but uh, also missing the mark. <laughs> well, he had ambitions. Not sure it was the right one. That's some a very long way out. Already both teams struggling to, to keep possession of the ball. Coach George there in our picture. You can hear him barking out instructions to, to pass the ball and move it around. But it's so congested, particularly in the middle of the park. It's uh, proven to be uh, very challenging. Certainly from a space side perspective and a Malik perspective. Well, using his strengths there. He has Eastman. Finally combining but losing possession this time. Richards. Long ball looking for Samuel. Well, he might get the 14 of the bunk. Samuel. He's lost his man here. Samuel! What a goal from Samuel! The Malik boys are back. One lapse in concentration was all it took. And Samuel was able to hit the mark, 1-0. Well, goalkeeper Taylor is walk, looking around, wondering what just flew by him. It was a Samuel special. Didn't look like much at first, but when he got the chance to put his laces through it, he absolutely walloped the football. And it's given Malik the lead out of nothing. So Uber Samuel getting Malik on the sheet in the seventh minute. How will Speedside respond? Well, he's done well for himself, but just running out of real estate in the end. And just like that, Brent, the game has woken up. Yeah, and I'm looking at the first attempt there by the defender, Kwashi, who attempted to clear it, James. He missed it. But there was still work to do for Samuel. And I tell you what, James, he made that work look very, very easy. Instead of trying to dribble past his defender, he instead relied on his shooting capabilities. And boy, oh boy, can he shoot the football? Because it was not just hit with precision, but with a lot of power. That's about 20 yards out or so, I would say. Well, certainly a beauty. We've seen some beauties in this competition. Yeah, that's up there. That's good skill. Oh, here they come again, the boys in blue and finding space again. He's got options this time. Oh, but Samuels, this time he loses his footing. And this time the boys in yellow will get rid of the danger, at least temporarily. But they come again. Malik secondary. Numbers queuing up inside the area this time. Oh, oh, oh. well, came off the laces. But gravity not coming to the assistance that time for Richards. And the Malik boys, they're knocking. Again, they've been picked off speed side. Malik killing to find some rhythm. It's quite even in the opening few exchanges, but it certainly has changed. He tied, just like the weather. Well, did have sight of his man for a second. Couldn't quite find Matthews, who lost his footing. And yeah, Malik has certainly shown signs of getting some sort of fluidity in the game. I know you mentioned there was none at the start. James was certainly starting to come, particularly with the likes of Matthews and Samuel up front. They're providing good combination play. That man on the ball, he seems a bit crafty when he does have the opportunity, Matthews. Looks a handful already. Oh. And this man as well. <laughs> Can find some space to push forward here. It's Halls. Oh, it's a dancing show now, but... Uh, well, he forgot the ball. Yeah, he certainly <laughs> did, but he will get a second bite this time. And this time he yeah. just put too much pressure on Eastman. And he, he had an option to pass the ball. And said uh, Halls decided he can do it on his own. 
So it'll be a free kick to Speyside. Well, he's been stunned early. Leaves a bolt of bullet of a strike over Samuels. Difference between these teams at the moment. Well, maybe now they can answer. So it'll be the boys in blue to get it away. Play is allowed to continue and uh, Richards will push forward. And uh, again, he can't get around Eastman. He's proven that he is quite solid in that position. Well, he's been called on twice already in the last uh, minute or so. And he not only had to be switched on, but he had to show a bit of strength in his uh, work that was required of him. Eastman. They've not, uh, Malik looked to attack down their right hand side on and, and occasions. They, they seemingly like the joy that they're getting from Matthews on the left hand side. But uh, nevertheless, Eastman switched on and uh, awaits whatever comes his way. Johnson. Well, couldn't find his footing there, Campbell. Will be the boys in blue to, well, live dangerously. Almost lost it in the area. Finally, now they will come away with it. And, uh, Oh, perhaps a bit of overplaying there from Malik. And speed side to Daniel. Could look dangerous. He's got two inside the area this time. Well, can he get a service in? Pews for a foul. Goes unheeded by Nikolai Nyron. So it's Malik. And the way they will come down the right hand channel. Just over the head of Samuels, but he could get a second bite of the cherry. He's quicker. And uh, good defending in the end. Yeah, and I thought he would have had a shot there, James. It seemed that he probably would have been better served if he had a strike on Taylor. Instead, he decided to laser the ball across. But it was always defenders in attendance in the box. And maybe Samuel there just showed a bit of naivety. Well, they will get another opportunity, this time from a corner. Malik have piled in the bodies in the area lots of yellow shirts as well this one this time can't beat the man at the first post Batiste and he will send that far from his goal Halls well intercepted and uh, again they can't hold on but maybe now Campbell can well, good footwork from the young man, but he's run himself into trouble, and uh, it's one back by Malik. Struggle to find space when in possession, space side. Do look to have some good individual quality, but spatial awareness, something that I have noticed might have been might be lacking from the team. Yeah, and give Malik credit because uh, they're very quick in trying to recover the football when they lose it, particularly in the middle of the park. They're getting bodies. Uh, in and around. Now, Kristen Thomas among the folks getting a good look at the action. From a professional player. Oh, this could be interesting. And effectively dealt with by the boys in blue. But here comes Speyside again. Oh, finally finding some space now. Campbell gets Daniel involved. Well, he's gone past the one, Daniel. Looking for more space. Maybe a cross can be in. And uh, too easy, too close to the goalkeeper. Heavy touch, but he's lucky to win it back. And again, turning into traffic. Yeah, there's a lot of blue shirts in and around. As I said, I've been very impressed in their attitude. An application in trying to win the ball back. They've not been great necessarily or smooth in their possession, but when they do lose it, Malik, they're on you like a flash. Yes, Thomas. And uh, well, Singh can't keep it in. Will be a space side throw. One nil the score over Samuels, a difference maker in the seventh minute. Well, can they make a difference here? Speyside? Well, they certainly thought about it for a second. They need more like that, perhaps with a bit more quality. It's been starved of chances, George, so far in this fixture. 
Well, that's a clever turn. He's got blue shirts piling forward. And again, it's that man getting in the way, but he's lost it. And Malik could be in this time. Richards couldn't wrap his foot around it. Well, maybe now Magician can open up the doorways. Almost did. So close for the boys in blue. They look dangerous when they go forward. Yeah, they do. Especially through that man. Eastman. Matthew, sorry. For Malik. He seemed to have the beating of Williams on that uh, right side of defense for Speyside. He ah. certainly won his fair share of 1v1 situations. And uh, he's not shy <laughs> at all, Matthews. So a good bit of skill, movement of the body, and then try to, of course, uh, do the right thing, which, which was, uh, of course, shoot to the keeper's back post. It's inches close. Yo, this is aimed in at Daniel. And he should get there first, but it goes out eventually for a corner. Last touch came off the foot of that man Singh. Well, they haven't gone into a shell, James, space side. They've uh, still battled despite being one goal down. And uh, they've been uh, extremely direct in their approach. Oh, they're piling in now, the old boys. Let's get a closer look at Malik's secondary. They've played three matches so far, winning two, losing one. They lost to Presentation College 1-0. Went down to 10 men in that match. It's been the reverse for Speyside secondary. Just one of the last three fixtures they would have won. Looking for two today. Six yellow shirts in the area. Couldn't find any, but maybe now Eastman can get it on frame. Ball. Had visions of grandeur for a second. Just lacked the quality to keep it under the crossbar. Well, he would think he hit it with his uh, weaker right foot in that situation, but he did have enough time to not only set his sights, but at, at least get it on target. He didn't, he wasn't able to. It's good technique. Just, again, poor execution. Well, here comes the boogeyman. Has he lost his footing? I'll tell you what. Well, he doesn't seem to think so. <laughs> He may think, Matthews, that he was impeded there. Of course, uh, the referee Nyron is a lot closer to the spot of butter than we are. Well, he can smile about it now, and Nyron having a word with him. Didn't believe him for a second. But it was a bit clumsy from Kwashi. So all defended by the Big guy to the middle, but again, it's with Malik. And again, and they have ideas of Matthews getting on the end of it. That time, it's too long ahead of him. I wonder what he's saying. Reminded me of my parents when I was being scolded. Make a statement without saying a word. Well, I think he'd be happy, first and foremost, to be 1-0 up. Despite uh, taking the lead, they haven't really taken authority of this game. It's still very much a, a seesaw battle. Well, they all look to get play restarted. Lots of blue bodies inside of the area. Finds a yellow head. Not very far from danger, but Richards maybe can weave his way through. Not this time. Koshi has a uh, very dominant in imposing his force at the back. Here's Daniel. He looked to impose his will on the left side for space side. Well, it's found a pocket of space now, haven't they? And uh, just missing the mark in terms of finding. The feet of George again. It's been a worker on top, but he haven't picked him out often enough. 
And Malik will come again. Woodley running into Daniel. And uh, this time they'll try to get Campbell in some space, but too long for him in the end. And that's uh, the second occasion Woodley got caught in possession. He's a tidy midfielder, but his job as uh, the number six in the middle of the park is really to give and go, as they say. Give and get. And uh, sometimes he takes three, four touches uh, a bit too much. Oh, this time he's about as beaten. Can he exploit the space ahead of him? It's just one body in the area. He finds his mind this time and he's found the target. That's a save. Well worth it sold from Speyside Secondary. He'll have to be alert again here. And whoa, what a chance that was. You won that back. Yeah, good couple phases of play there for Malik. It's a really good shot coming in by Richards. I'm sure Taylor was unsighted with that, but uh, it was the right idea. It's just unfortunate, but it's a good save at the end. And of course, that man, Samuel up front, who's a uh, real live wire for Malik. And don't forget, don't miss the excitement of the SSFL and Sportsmax app. All you've got to do is download the app from the App Store or Google Play. Catch all the league action and updates on the Sportsmax app. Also, don't miss the excitement of the ESA schoolboy football on the app. And uh, well, it's the same process. It's available everywhere. Check it out. It's Samuel. Certainly finding a lot more space as the yellow shirts retreat. Looking for that right boot, and it's well defended. Johnson just putting his body on the line, and this time they will come away now with Phillips. Ken George has a long chase ahead of him. It's a chase that he does well to win. Losing out in the end before the high elbow. That will get them a talking to from Nikolai Nyron. And a yellow card issued to George. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't necessary really George he just needed to get himself back in front of the ball instead he tried to utilize a lot of his hand when it be pulling or trying to of course impede can't do that it's well one Philip looking for Daniel he's found some space himself here Daniel well, can't get it wrong this man this time. Well, he's done well, Daniel. And, uh, well, Nikolai Nairon seems to think it's a penalty. And Spearside with an opportunity to get back in the match. Thanks to that man, Daniel. Well, it was a lot of physicality in that play. And uh, credit that man in your, in your picture. Uma Daniel. Daniel. For persevering with it more than anything else. I'm sure from a Malik perspective, they would think that uh, there wasn't much they are guilty of. But uh, they don't have the whistle. Referee Nyron does. It will be an opportunity for Quashi to put his team back on level terms. Nikosi Quashi can. 1-1. One, one. It's game on. She loves it. Well, goalkeeper Worrell picked the side and Quashi just simply passed it into the middle of the goal. And just like that, against the run of play, Space Sider back in this one. As I mentioned, James, they never really put their heads down when they went one goal down. And a credit to them, they're back in it. So it's one all. Equalizer coming from the Kosi Kwashi via the penalty spot in the 25th minute. Well, the boys in blue, they 
Hitting back right away and that. This one is well defended from Batiste. Top left with the confirmation of the earlier yellow card given to George. No, oh, just errant in the end. Has to be careful though. Wasn't very careful. Space side almost nipped back possession. Well, it's a bad giveaway, and Speedside will look to capitalize. It's foul. Clark just tugged down on Nikolai Narion. Well, he's a lot more vocal now. We saw him early in the match. Intensity rising much more than the midday heat here in Trinidad and Tobago. Duncan. It's a good pass. And it will find the intended target, Matthews. It's well defended, though. And Williams, credit to him, was able to get it away from danger. Well, he made some good height there, George. Trying to win that one and could still keep it alive for space as Campbell gets involved. He's lost it now. Ferdinand looking for Samuel, the keeper. Well, couldn't hold on. Chance still open and chance given away by Duncan. It's the second one he's missed. And the space side survive. Yeah. And he would be disappointed because at the end of the day, it was an open net and he just needed a bit of composure. Said he really swashed and swiped at it, never really get in full contact, and of course the chance goes a begging. James, it's well defended. Hoshi just getting covering a lot of distance. Malik did start to take control of a fixture. Just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, you're correct. And I was about to say that, uh, James, they've lost their way a bit. Particularly since uh, Kwashi brought space side level. They were starting to find joy and, and be a lot more productive in their, in their possession. But now we've seen a lot of that. Errant kicks and passes and, and giveaways. And uh, they have to be careful because uh, space side is not going away. They're still very much in and around this contest. Well, I have to defend the corner. Thomas unable to get a handle on it. Williams will take charge of the duties. He's got seven yellow shirts inside the area. Just needs to find one. Well, oh, doesn't. And it's away by Malik. Looking for Samuel. Still will eventually get to Samuel. Samuel did get the game's opening goal, but he's overrun it, and it's won back by Speyside. I, I, I would tell you this, James. I think Speyside is a bit lucky because they left Samuel uh, in a 1v1 situation while they were taking that corner. And if it was uh, for better service from Matthews, i tell you, I would... Uh, fancy Samuel any day over any defender in a 1v1 situation so this time it will be a goal kick Matt's just losing some of the flow and momentum we saw mere moments earlier it's well won and Halls will Seek to find the run of Richards. Samuel. He's kept it well. Richards runs ahead of him. He's turning out of traffic. And he will get Ferdinand involved. 
And uh, well, that's too long in the end for Matthews. Just lacking that final bit of quality in the third, final third. Malik secondary. Certainly has been an Achilles heel of both teams. It's a good individual play, but just lacking the final ball. Yeah, it's the collective. I think hasn't been good. We've seen one or two flashes of individual brilliance, certainly for Matthew and Samuel from a Malik perspective and George from a, a space side perspective, but we really haven't seen that collective approach. One or two passes, some combination play, a little bit of innovation, just not theirs. And it's really, of course, have not made this game uh, one that, it's, uh, that has a high quality. It's oh. been moments like this. Tanya looking to create a moment for George, but the goalkeeper this time will get there first. Well, flag is up. That is offside. Could Charles right on top of action. Just a sprinkling of rain ahead of this match. It's made the surface a beautiful one to play on. It's quite level. Did have periods of very high heat in Trinidad and Tobago. Perhaps one of the coolest match days for the boys so far. Well, not sure that was a good idea, but he escapes with it. Or has he? The captain for winning it back for space side. They'll tussle for this here. And Campbell doing well to win it. Eastman looking for Daniel. Pass just going awry, and it will be won by Singh. Well, just can't seem to pin the dots, can they? Yeah, and that uh, goes to both teams. It's been really poor. And uh, it's a moment where both teams are really struggling to find their way. don't think it's fatigue. I just think it's uh, maybe a slight rush of blood on both sides. And that's where the, the sea wood comes in, composure. I think both teams need a, a stretch of time with the ball, possessing it a bit. Well, they will have a chance of a dead ball situation. Ferdinand surveying his options. Deep in the area, Samuels is there. And away by Speyside. Did seem to fall dangerously for him for a second. Here's George now. Heavy touch, but he's yeah, clever that's feet. I don't think it was malicious, uh, James. I think it was just very late. So, yellow card for Malik. Something that they will share. It seemed to go to Woodley. He joins the Naughty Boy corner. Looking for Samuel. Oh, he's doing his men well, haven't he? It's well defended, though. It's only as far as Duncan. Oh, how about that for a party trick? In a good area. Could fall for anybody. Does fall to yellow shirt as Clark gets rid of the danger. But it's lost. It's Woodley. Couldn't find Duncan. And Eastman. Oh, what in the world is he doing? He's lost it. 48 that Campbell can bring it away and... Uh, well, the defense will get to rest because Paul will use the services of his goalkeeper. Well, fell asleep. They had a high boot from Eastman. And uh, Nikolai Nairon certainly taking notice. Could be a caution. He's calling for calm, though. Might have been nonchalant, but did seem to catch the face of Duncan 
Well, Eastman certainly wasn't aware as to who, what or why was around him. I'm not sure if he thinks that uh, he's the only one on the pitch, but it needed a bit of urgency to get to the ball. He didn't do that. And in not doing so, it, of course, allowed, I believe it was... Duncan. It's interesting, James, and it's as close as we thought it would have been from a possession point of view. But look at the pass completion. That's poor. 63 and 60%. I'm trying to think of any other game that we've done that we've seen such a low pass completion. Well, goal completion. Been able to get two so far in this fix there. Or maybe three. Or maybe not. Just couldn't keep it anywhere close. Crossed by Matthews. Has looked dangerous. Certain areas of the field, but he just needs that finishing touch, Jalen Matthews. Yeah, I think Matthews and, and Samuel certainly has been the pick of the litter as it relates to both teams for that matter. Mitro Georgian, right sided player for Speyside. And uh, if there is any moment of magic or goals to come, you think it would come from one out of those three gentlemen? Well, maybe Campbell can get a pick in that conversation but Daniel in a good area forcing a corner it's been lively Daniel yeah Daniel kept saying George Daniel is the one that's the third of it he looks lively so have a look at sprinkling of the fans here we've got a good seat looks like she's uh, missing a pack of nuts and maybe a snow cone James oh the ideal football condiments Dude, one myself. Well, maybe Space I can do it a goal. And whoa, Daniel has gotten at the end of that one. Couldn't keep it under the crossbar. But they're not asleep yet in the offensive third, Space Side. And again, it's that man, Daniel, at the end of everything good offensively for Space Side. Well, on the other end, this man here, Samuel, certainly has been a handful. <laughs> well, he used a handful of Eastman's shirt as well. That's what got him in the naughty corner. You know, I'm looking at him, James, and I'm thinking of the other teams that we've seen so far. And I could see uh, many defences struggling to, to keep him contained. Because uh, he's not just lively uh, if the ball is played into him. If it, even if it's not played into him, down the sides, into the channels, he's still very active and still willing to chase. Right now, he's up against three players from space side and he is giving them as good as he can get, as good as he gets. And it's a testament to him. I just wonder if, uh, of course, uh, Malik may look at maybe pairing him with someone. Yeah, it's a, I, I just feel that maybe his supporting cast takes a bit too long uh, to come in support of him. But uh, that being said, he's certainly been a handful. Yes, Campbell. Oh, try to get the old hat trick going. And, uh, well, all he succeeded was following his man. Getting a touch, a squashy, sufficient. Get it out of danger. Well, he'd have to hurry here. Thomas, he's done well. His pass eventually picked off by Williams. Campbell. Good defending coming through from Halls. Read the danger well. The try again though, the boys in yellow. And it's well picked off by Singh, who can get going forward here. Well, Samuels was his target, but just seemed to overhit it. And they've given it right back. Devontae Duncan. Halls. Well, they're lining up now, and uh, Samuels is there, but again, just too far forward. I think when you look at the match, uh, a lot of the defensive issues that the boys in yellow have had have been self-inflicted. Yes, yeah, certainly have been. 
and uh, they haven't dealt with things the way they should have. And certainly that's how the first goal was scored. And it's the hesitation at the back is what's uh, caused a lot of the problems. I think one of the guiltier culprits of that is uh, Eastman on our side here. Well, he's turned away from trouble nicely, looking for support and Halls just picks it off the intended target. Eastman. Only as far as Halls. Richards. Well, has he picked out the run here? Yeah, the, again, the right idea, but poor execution. We've seen that a couple of times now. And, uh, well, Malik will have an opportunity because it's a fall just outside the area. And it's a fall that you can watch on the Sportsmax app if you download it now from our app store and on the Google Play. Catch all the league action and updates. And, of course, you can also catch the excitement of the Easter Schoolboy football on the Sportsmax app. Download it now. Ferdinand will be the one responsible to get this in the area. Maybe get Malik ahead. Balls once away. Can't find it to the sea of yellow. It's ticking down to half time. And uh, it's a match that the intensity has ebbed and flowed. More ebbs than flowing, though. Can one team forge ahead before half time? Thrown into trouble, Matthews and Richards had to tussle for it. One back by Daniels, who's lost his footing. Oh, here's Matthews now. And again, just not finding the right solution but daniels maybe he can if he can get in behind here and it was thomas coming across to put in the challenge but again it's daniels causing all sorts of trouble down the right well that needed a better pass Campbell was the intended man. And here's Samuels. This time, not getting away past Quashi. He's quite physically imposing. Not afraid to get his body on the line. Ferdinand. Singh. Richards, just get ahead on it. Samuels is there, but the goalkeeper is quicker. Good goalkeeping. He's been solid when called upon, the space side keeper. Yeah, other than the one that he had to pick out of the net where I think he didn't have a chance at. He has uh, shown a, a safe pair of hands and certainly a safe, a safe mind because he's made good decisions. Koshi. Can he find a good solution? He can't this time. It's Woodley. This could be dangerous. Matthews. Well, look at this. It's on his right boot, but he wants it on his left, and the goalkeeper, good hands in the end. Thought perhaps he should have gone with his left. Yeah, maybe tuck it in and, and try to guide it in with his right foot, pass it around instead. And of course, he's still in a, a, a bit of a shock. Well, perhaps the most talented man on the park. Yeah, I don't know how you balance that on your head and still make those uh, facial gestures. That is a talent in itself. World class. Well, we're a lot closer to the end of first half regulation time. Team still locked, not just in battle, but in terms of a scoreline. They'll have one minute to try and figure out some solutions. Couldn't figure it out that time, but will be Malik's ball. Halls. 
Couldn't find Duncan Wall, intercepted by Eastman. Well, oh. it's corn to space side. Thought for a second, though, that might have been in some trouble there, Clark. He's earned the referee's trust, and uh, he's earned himself a good spot to try and give space side some sort of goodies. Heading into halftime, can they break the deadlock? It's Eastman. I think he might attempt to go at goal. And, uh, well, needed a lot more quality to beat that man. And, uh, well, they'll need a lot more time because time is complete in the first half. It's a first half that has lacked quality in the final third. It's the first half that we've seen two goals. Goals scored for both teams. And uh, it's the first match that we'll have lots to talk about for both coaches at the halfway whistle. He certainly got a lot on his mind. And uh, we'll use the 15 minutes of intermission to let the boys know exactly what he thinks. At halftime here at Serpentine Road, it's Malik 1, Space Side 1. We take a break and come back. SSFL Premier Shirley At the head, at the half here at Serpentine, it is Space Side High School 1, Malik Secondary School. One goal is just about even on the half here at St. Mary's College Grounds. Guys, looking at the statistics, what does it say to the matchup and how the first half went thus far? Yeah, it's, it's pretty even when you look at statistics in terms of shots. But what's important to look at, you, you look at 10 shots versus 5 and uh, you look at shots on target and you just got 4 shots on target in the entirety for both these teams. Wow, out of 15 It says shots. that shots have been happening, they've been getting into positions, but it says that they've lacked quality. And fouls? Yeah, when you look at uh, the rest of it, the stats, of course, it's been a stop-start sort of game. So the fouls department is on the moderate to high side. Uh, as you scroll and you go down further, of course, you go to the possession and it's been quite even. Uh, and just going back to, obviously, James and his stat with the shots on target, it shows that it has a g it's a game that's lacked genuine quality. Yeah. Uh, and as much as we've seen a lot of, of course, uh, both teams trying to go for it uh, and a lot of attention being played in the middle of the park, it's certainly lack quality and it certainly lack quality in the final third and that's why we've seen the sort of numbers we've seen so far. Well, let's talk about the first 20 minutes of the game, exactly what happened at that point. Well, I think Malik started the better of the two teams. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and then when they got their goal, 
uh, they started to go into the decline. Of course, Speyside got that uh, penalty that we will discuss a little bit later on. Uh, and that was, uh, of course, uh, the further decline of Malik. They yeah. seem to have lost their way a bit. Of course, in the likes of Samuel, uh, in particular, he is a lively runner. Uh, Matthews on the other side, on the left-hand side for Malik. He's also someone that's seemingly getting his joy on that side. They can get back in the game with those two players, but I think overall uh, they'll be disappointed because when you look at it from its uh, totality, you would say that uh, Malik would have dominated probably for about 20 minutes and then they, they went out of the game. Yeah, let's talk about the midfielder a little bit, James. Yeah, in terms of midfielder uh, for Malik, Malik in particular, uh, they've done well in terms of keeping the ball. They've done that in their third of the field pretty well. It's when they advance forward, making the right decisions. I was looking at Barcelona play today, Gavi. He's only 18 <laughs> years old. La Mina Mal, 16 mm -hmm. years old. The, the main decision and the main thing that separates the team, decision making. And I think that's where Malik have faltered. They've made wrong decisions in bad areas of the field, particularly when they get into that final third. And that has let them down in the match. Anything else to take note of in that first half that you gentlemen really saw that made a big difference? I, I think what you have to, you have to give Speyside credit because despite the fact that they went one goal down, yeah. they still were persistent in their pursuit. Not only just to get Get back in the game but to remain relevant in the game and they kept themselves buoyant because of the way that they were certainly tenacious in their approach and they gave as lot as good as they got from Malik uh, in, in particular of course at some point I know we're going to discuss the penalty and I would say guys that I thought it was a bit soft from my perspective uh, it looked like uh, Daniel yes he did get the beating of his man but I wasn't sure if it was an infringement for a spot kick, of course, I always give the referees the opinion because they're closer than we are. Yeah. But uh, from my point of view, I thought it was a bit soft. Yeah, at right. first glance, it did look a tad soft. But uh, again, no benefit of the replay this time around. So it's a referee's call. And I think, uh, well, that's going to be a conversation piece for a long time to come. <laughs> and here at Sportsmax, we respect the refs. <laughs> so we'll go with their decision this time around. Now, what is going to make the difference in the second half in, make, in determining which team is going to go on top of this one? I think from a, a Malik perspective, you, you, you think that despite the work that Samuel has done in the first half, I think he needs, of course, a little bit more support, or at least support faster than what he's been getting. Yes, he's worked well, he's occupied three space side defenders, but I think if he had a little bit more support, particularly uh, with the, the midfielders coming a bit faster to him when he does get the service, I think Malik would be better. Of course, the quality in the middle of the park has to be a little bit cleaner, and I think they need to, to execute better in the final third. Well, guys, let's look at one of our goalkeepers at this point in time, brought to you courtesy Omega XL. We take a look at one of our keepers. The preparation for me has been physically challenging, but mentally, I'm still okay. I think it's harder to play away because it's harder for the team to adapt. My pre-game ritual is just to sit down and have deep thoughts about the game before us. The player I look up to is Neuer because of his play style. My goals are to be scouted and play for an international team. My mentor that I really look up to is my father because he gives me advice that works out for me. What gives my team the advantage on the field is our physical ability. I feel motivated by trying to make the national under-17 team, so I have to stay fit. There we have the coach, Bartholomew, coach Ako George, talking to the players at this point in time as we get ready to jump inside the second half. Guys, space side high, moving into that second half. What needs to be done? What have we noticed? Yeah, I think what Ako George is saying to those players, they've got to be better spatially away. Uh, you see a lot of their play trying to come through the center, a center that is very congested. Uh, Malik would have started at five across the middle. That's very a very compact five. It's difficult breaking down and finding space there. We look at the right hand side. It's been non-existent for speed side in this match indeed a lot of the play has come to in fact in fact the right has been active but the left has been non-existent and and the reason that daniel has been able to get so much space is because he's created a bit of width he started wider creating channels inside and and if the defender doesn't come with if the defender doesn't come with him then he gets it out wide and he has some space that's non-existent on this side of the field they've got to find ways to find space on this park and open up opportunities or else they will have to be as direct and then we also see decision making you've got defenders dribbling out of areas in the back yeah. they've been losing it to Malik's high press and I think it, it, it Malik has pressed yes but Speyside had offered them gifts in terms of 
ball turnovers close in dangerous areas. But unfortunately, Malik hasn't been able to maximize on a lot of those errors made by Speyside High, Brent. No, they haven't, and it's unfortunate from their perspective. Again, they need to be a lot more clinical, of course, in their attacking team when they do have those sorts of turnovers. Well, let's look at Malik Secondary School's goalkeeper, Mr. Warrell. It is challenging playing in a current format, but we're here for the challenge and we'll never give up. Preparation mentally and physically has been hard because you have to balance a school life, a home life and football life. I stay motivated through tournaments and tough practices by praying because God is without God, nothing is possible, and my mom because she always there pushing me. The player that I look up to is Mark Andre Tastegan. He plays for FC Barcelona. He is very good with his feet. He's very composed, and he, his ability to save is very good. My goal this season is to lift the trophy with my team and to go home with a victory. What gives my team an advantage on the field is me because I am saving every goal, but not getting past me. Omarion Warrell from Malik Secondary School, his goal to lift that trophy, and they will need to get a win here today. When we come back around second half action here at Serpentine Road, Malik Secondary versus Speyside High. For all of you all viewing, log on. Download if you haven't already. The Sports Max app is where you can get all the action in terms of it's a schoolboy football and the secondary school's football league here in Trinidad and Tobago. Speyside High won. Malik Secondary won. When we come back around, we find out who leaves here with three points or do they share the one point inside the secondary school's football league premiership division.
to SSFL Prevent Shirley Show. A tide contest here at Serpentine Road as a well Malik secondary and space side are locked at one goal apiece. Ignore what you saw in the graphic there, of course, at Malik against space side. These teams locked in action, one apiece, and Nikolai Narrow and all set and ready to resume the second half action. Well, from the looks of things, they look ready as well. And uh, well, Malik did take the lead early in the contest over Samuel. But that lead was handed over when Speyside got the equalizer. James Saunders is my name, Brent Sancho alongside me. As we get set for the second half, we spoke a lot about what we saw in the first half. What are the keys moving into the second half of this fixture? Yeah, I think uh, Malik would obviously see that they have some work to do in the sense of getting someone closer to Samuel up front who's been lively. And of course, uh, they have to find ways, James, to try to isolate that man Matthews out left get him in the situations where he is 1v1 because he has had the beating of Williams his opposing wing back if we can find if they can find him more in those situations I think they'll be happy for space side I think more of the same they have to figure out a way now to be a little bit more productive on the offensive end oh play is on the way time for talking is over only action will determine who walks away with all three points well that's a naughty action and it might get him a talking to from Nikolai Nairon. Just some exuberance there from Javante Duncan. Jasanti for that matter. I'd love to know what that means. But uh, he does escape with just a bit of a verbal caution. He didn't escape though, Daniel. He has been at the heart of everything special for Speyside so far. But it has earned them a free kick and an early chance to make inroads in this fixture. It will be Williams to oversee this project. Just overran it there, and it will be headed away by Blue Shield, only as far as Eastman. And, uh, well, he had glorious ambition. That's all it will be. Ambition. Didn't trouble that man. Space side will getting the early looks in at goal. Second half so far. Singh. Well, this could be special. Ronaldinho Richards is there. Whoa! And over Samuel. Well, I'm not sure how we missed that one. I'm not sure he knows either. But what it needed was just a bit of belief. He lacked it. He tried to smash the football, James, when it just really needed a touch. Maybe if he just got his studs over it to guide it in past Taylor. They really didn't need all of that backlift. Instead, of course, I think that's a chance going to begging for them. I'm very sure Samuel has the capability of making amends. Well, here's Ronaldinho. That's bad. Yeah, Ronaldinho Richards. This time missing the mark himself. Well, I guess they even. He was the one who put it on a platter for Samuel's the first chance and uh, second bite going to him. They both missed. Well, it's a kind of start that uh, Malik probably would have envisaged. Now can they turn that into goals? Looking at the names though, we've got a Ronaldinho and uh, we've got a Riquelme. Whatever happened to Ronaldo? That was the popular one in our time. I was going to ask for Brent, but I, I guess that's me asking for too much. If you're talking about oil, well, <laughs> it's still there. Maybe a Daniel, but he can't get on the end of this. And uh, we'll be only as far that's as Pochi. Wow. That's, and that's silly. He's been toppled, the big man. Yeah. And uh, this, the names are starting to pile up in the book now for Malik, and they really have to be careful. I think the last thing they need is to play with a man down. It was really uncalled for by Richards. I don't think he had a chance of winning the ball. Didn't think he had a chance of toppling Kwashi. Well, this is a chance though, speed side. Couldn't pick out any of his teammates. Well, here's Daniel again. He's got happy feet, but he doesn't have the precision to keep it in. 
Ball by ball. Well, the students at Speyside High recently were involved in painting a mural in Tobago. World Peace Day. Certainly one of the schools that contributed to that bit of project. Certainly something that they will be very proud of. Well, this could be tricky and needed some extra help to get it away. Still, does find a way out of the challenges and can get George going. His touch perhaps too heavy and easy in the end for the goalkeeper. Well, he's done that a couple of times in the first half. Goalkeeper Worrell just uh, punts it downfield when there's uh, certainly blue shirts available where he could maybe build out of the back. I'm not sure if that's a, a ploy, a tactical ploy, but on uh, the occasions that he's done it, James, it's come right back at him. Yeah, something that we've spoken about at halftime on forced errors has been the Achilles heel, you would think, speed side. Just wonder, maybe, as good as that opening strike from Malik was, Initial error hadn't been committed. What the scoreline might have been like. Campbell, well, he's running to a brick wall, hasn't he? And uh, this time they will ask for the goalkeeper's help. That's a good touch, though. Couldn't find Daniel and Singh intercepts the wall. Come right back at Halls. And maybe Ronaldinho Richards could be in here. Well, as he been tripped, he kept going. Just wondered if he had gone down, what might have happened. But Ferdinand, scuffed effort. They're scrambling everywhere now. And uh, not even Matthews could get his shot away. Scary moments. Good moments for Malik. Yeah, and uh, you would think in those uh, three possible chances on goal, it would have troubled Taylor. None of it really did. It's just a lot of, I don't want to say hot air, but uh, certainly not anything to get his uh, gloves dirty. But they're knocking on the door, Malik. Well, they do get away that one there. Johnson for Speyside. It's right back at them. Samuel running into Eastman. He's done well to keep it. Jalen Matthews comes for support and they will have a throw. No, oh, that was like hot here. It rises. Ferdinand, the guilty man there. Yeah, we spoke about the Ronaldinho's and the Raquel Mays. He's got Jordan. <laughs> I knew that would have uh, popped up at some point. No, oh, Ferdinand does well to win it in midfield Halls can turn away from trouble no. well the yellow shirts on the opposite end can they find a way in George it's done well but he can beat Thomas but both teams uh, haven't really looked convincing defending those bouncing balls Goalkeeper, though, he's been very convincing. Yeah, and that's a uh, good goalkeeper, James. I'm sure you would appreciate that because I think if he was a split second later on that approach, I think that man Samuel would have gotten in. It's good, strong, decisive goalkeeping by Taylor. He's done it uh, once in the first half. I think that one in particular in the second half uh, certainly permitted a goal from scoring. Ronaldinho. Couldn't beat Quashi. Positioned himself well, Quashi. But here again, Ronaldinho Richards. Couldn't make the two yellow shirts in front of him disappear. And it's only as far as Epiphany Halls. <laughs> They've certainly got some interesting names, haven't they? And, uh, well, the name of this one is done well. He's done well, pretty well. Thought he might have lost it, Duncan. Oh, well, 
to that just come off the crossbar I'm not quite sure but it remains in play and uh, well, all the party chicks are coming out and uh, doing everything in their power to stop him Jalen Matthews and he's won a corner yeah and uh, I'm a bit surprised that uh, he did not uh, probably gotten a bit more in terms of a free kick because he was impeded on the line maybe even in the box because of course uh, there's advantage play but if it, if there isn't that advantage then maybe it could be pulled back but they're starting to knock on the door Malik secondary these sorts of clearances certainly is not going to help space side scores yes Ferdinand looking for help toss find it it's a good touch Ferdinand and uh, yeah yeah cricket matches might have earned you four runs <laughs> or football, six <laughs> football, football you only get rice tears <laughs> but it was the right idea again uh, the wrong technique as we look at uh, some of the Malik faithful now becoming a lot more vocal as uh, the boys in blue are starting to turn the screws a bit certainly a lot livelier second half and better performances all around the park for Malik maybe tiring legs at space side just feel they've spurned some really top opportunities to be in the lead in this match. Quite right, they have been offered a lot, haven't taken any. Speyside fans will be happy about that. Don't think, uh, from a tactical perspective, Speyside have uh, corrected much of what we did speak about at halftime in terms of finding space. Most of the attacks still coming down the right to Duncan. Oh, there we go. Commentator's curse. <laughs> yeah, because they're essentially defending in a back five. Because if you look at, uh, of course, uh, the positioning of Johnson in the middle for space side, he, he tucks in very close to Quashi and Baptiste uh, when they're defending. He's, he's already heading back there, which means... Phillips on the far left tucks all the way across almost to take over for which the hole that uh, or position that Johnson would have left and Daniel certainly has been asked to stay up that looks like Campbell will see the end of his afternoon yeah he's worked hard Deshaun Bradshaw will be the man coming in and I'm sure coach uh, Aqua George may be feeling at this point that he was losing the midfield battle so he need fresh legs in there Well, they come away with it now. Ken Kwashi. Yeah, they've been good at that, James. Stepping in. Baptiste and Kwashi and even Johnson as well. That's it, the referee. Yeah. <laughs> it's taken away from Raquel May Phillips. And that will be called back. Well, he's been frustrated. Well, he's been doubly frustrated, Ako George. And, uh, well, perhaps the coolest customer at the moment, Nikolai Nairon. Well, here's George. And, uh, well, Bradshaw with his first touch. Not sure you could classify that as a shot, but he did get it in a dangerous area. Of course, he has some work to do, and he does it well. Does give away a corner, though. Yeah, they've struggled to deal with the initial first ball, James, but uh, they've always seemed to somehow recover and clean up the second ball. I think in the goal that they conceded, they didn't do it, and that's why they conceded. But since then, they've been able to do it. No. He's been solid so far. The Goalkeeper for Space High, Omari and Worrell. Did see him in our halftime interview. His next assignment, keeping out this corner. Well, he's done that and uh, he's claiming that he might have been impeded. It's not an opinion shared by Nikolai Nairon. It will be another corner. Well, I'm sure the goalkeeper's union may agree with him. I just think he needed to be a bit stronger. Right approach. Well, this one will not find anybody in blue 
as he'll pump this in the area and again George has a long chase that he's second to oh he wants it back doesn't he what a run that was James running a long way and in the area from that man there Ronaldinho and uh, came to north in the end good effort though yeah, he was always stretching, wasn't in control of his body, so he wasn't able to make uh, the, the appropriate connection to it. But uh, Malik is starting to walk around with their tails up here, James. Josante Daniel, Duncan rather, Ferdinand, Tan's class is iron session. And uh, needed to find somebody in the blue. At the end of that, he didn't. It's a throw. Just wonder if it's cramp or otherwise. Yeah, he looked like uh, he may have extended himself a little bit more than he liked with that uh, left foot, attempted left foot cross. But they're experiencing a good moment here, James, in the game. They're starting to really turn the screws and pin Speyside in their own half and uh, they'll be disappointed if they don't uh, get some success for it and of course success is a goal if they can get one yeah just wonder if they will live to regret the early chances that were gifted to them in the second half Malik secondary of course We've only just returned, or in fact, I just entered the championship division. Were powerhouses in the past, in the 90s in particular. So they won their five league titles. Since the competition has been rebranded as the championship, they only made a return recently, two years ago. Three time North Zone champions, two time national intercall champions. It's a team with pedigree. Space side, on the other hand, a relatively new school in the competition. Of course, the Tobago division for years had been dominated by the likes of Signal Hill, Scarborough Secondary as well. Space side certainly have put their hands up and have taken the reins of football in Tobago. Not a very good season last year. However, they have been able to remain consistent and remain in the competition. Another change perhaps, this time for Malik. And it will, new man, will be Joseph. Well, Ferdinand well, didn't seem to be able to shake off that last injury, Jordan Ferdinand. It's a good pass. He did a good touch from Singh. Let's put get a good move and can he get a good player to finish it? Again, Johnson stepping out. Seen that on a couple occasions well. He's guarded that back four really well for Space Side. Good four for Duncan. It's corner for Daniel rather. He's gone along. He's, he's gone across to the left hand side with uh, Philip occupying the right side. Just still feel though, you need a bit more width from that man, Philip. Yeah, they've been very narrow and uh, they've not uh, given themselves the opportunity to really build out to the middle of the park and, and expand the play. James, if, uh, as you rightfully said, been all congested and as we've uh, lamented earlier, there's a lot of uh, individual play. We haven't seen any team build-up or team activities. I think what they do have going for them, the boys in yellow, they've got athleticism. It does make up for their lack of uh, technical players. But they've got athleticism, well, we've seen some scores coming in, uh, James. Presentation, North Shugwanas 
North. Well, zero, presentation zero, Shagona's North zero. That's a straight score at halftime. Fatima two, Pleasantville zero. A score I think we expected, but here's the one that you were looking for. St. Benedict's College one, Arima North secondary zero. Oh, certainly some surprises in there. St. Anthony's are also leading two goals to nil against St. Mary's. Yeah, these are all games in progress, not uh, final scores. And uh, uh, halftime scores. I think the one that juts out to us is that presentation against Shagornis North. Presentation being the home side. Shagornis North uh, haven't really enjoyed their stint so far. Yeah, just one win for them in Tobago. Yeah, but they've... Uh, conceded 20 goals in three games. I mean, we talked about the amount of goals that have scored uh, in the early stages, uh, something we don't want to see, of course, uh, one of the players coming off not in his own uh, his own strengths. Yeah. I thought it was a bit of cramp, but uh, it looks like, uh, well, we hope it's not more serious. But yeah, we're talking about the amount of goals, James, that have been scored in the league, and when you see teams conceding uh, 22 goals in three games, that is beyond alarming. And uh, and there's some we're seeing at least three of the teams in double figures already. Uh, Shagwanas North, 20 goals in three games, and even St Benedict's College, no, sorry, St Mary's College, uh, James, 11 goals in three games. That uh, raises eyebrows and uh, produces question marks. Well, you just wonder what the defenders and what the team's doing defensively. Oh. That's good football by Johnson. Play will resume uh, space side, currently with 10 on the field. So we'll find the blue shirt, a good touch from Ronaldinho, Richards, and he will get it returned to him. Quashi just using his body, effectively winning it back. So they haven't found a replacement yet for Phillips, who remains uh, receiving some treatment. And I uh, think it might be the end of his afternoon, Raquel May Phillips. And uh, finally, he will make that change. Sarjani so Stewart will step in to replace Raquel May Phillips. Seen an unfortunate end to his evening. It does look like a calf strain from my vantage point. He is getting some ice on it. And uh, I tell you what, Manchester United fans, uh, a lot of which are sitting in the control room today, well, might be celebrating 1-0 over Burnley. Eric Ten Hag stays. Well, that's just my opinion anyway. <laughs> yeah, there'll be some happy Red Devil fans, finally. Well, Daniel could make his fans happy. That's a good touch. He's done well in a great area. Has well he gone to ground? Yeah, that's well defended. He stuck with his task, and uh, and that's all he really needed to do, Thomas. I think Daniel's initial touch got him by Thomas, but uh, he was quick in his recovery, and that was well done. This is better from the goalkeeper. I think that's his first throw out, <laughs> James. Yeah, good touch as well from Josante Duncan. Yes, sing. Well, they're finding more space now. That's a good ball. That's a might just be too a long. little bit on it. Yeah, it's a good idea. And just probably a little bit too much on it. But uh, when you look at uh, the number of space I gets behind the ball compared to the number of blue shoots that's uh, attacking. Oh, there we go. Cassius Humphrey, part of our Sports Max team. Well, performing physio duties. Jack of all trade. Yeah, talented boy, isn't he? Son is also doing some big exploits as well on the football field. Yeah. Tell you some more about that. Daniel 
Wants to tell us in the moment now. Oh, that's football. clever. And space side wall. They came close, didn't they? Good save in the end. Best chance from the boys in yellow. Both teams now getting very good looks at goal. Oh, yes, Duncan. It's opened up. A lot of space here. Jalen Matthews. Well, it's on target and he spilled it. Warrell, but he recovered well on the second attempt, didn't he? Didn't quite cleanly hold it on the first attempt, but he was quick to use his core strength to get back up to make the second save. And that's just naughty. That's going to be a free kick. Well, Matthews isn't happy. And I think that his displeasure will earn him space in the naughty corner. Nicola and Aaron choosing to have a word first. Yeah, and uh, Matthews really doesn't need the afters. And I think he just needs to keep his uh, cool. Because despite the fact that, yes, he may feel that he has a case, he do not ever retaliate. We actually saw it this morning in the EPL with Rodri being sent off Manchester City again. Well, more changes are happening. And it is Manswell who will replace Epiphany Halls. We also saw it in the East Mokorapo game, James, the retaliation. Latchman. Lofted. Keeper's ball. Well, he hasn't held on and Washi yeah. coming to his rescue. Here comes the boys in blue. Still can't find space to get a shot away. But maybe here, Ronaldinho. Just running out of space, Ronaldinho Richards. Yeah, this is where they have to be careful. It's Daniel. He's got one ahead of him. Great Rest tackle. of the supporting Excellent cast coming. Tackle. But a very good tackle to win it back. And Malik on the other end, game opening up now. Jalen Matthews. Lots of blue shirts in the area. He's lost one man, he's lost two. All he needs is a good service. Gone past three. And uh, directly to the, to the goalkeeper. Thought he should have done more, Brent? Well, less. Pass the ball. <laughs> Once he got into that area, I'm looking at Samuels uh, waving his hands, asking for the ball. But uh, I think he heard the cheers and encore on the sideline and decided that uh, it's the right time to put in a performance. Didn't help his team. Because I, I do feel that if he'd gone out wide, he would have a bit more joy. Well, maybe he can recover here. It's a good touch from Duncan. And, uh, well, again, he could have passed out wide. Shot charged down this time by the substitute. And that, that's been the Achilles heel really for Malik over the last 10, 15 minutes. Decision making. The rushing shots and trying to make things happen when it's not on. And you're looking at Speyside and they look a bit uh, leg weary, James. Well, this man is finding space, Duncan. Yeah, and that's, that's not going to help your cause. Really was a shot in the dark. And it missed its mark. He's had two wavering moments. Warrell, the last few minutes, he's been quite solid at the start of this game, but he does open up space here for Daniel to get in, and uh, that's good defending from Malik. And it was that man, James, covering some ground to get rid of the danger. Captain Akeem James. Well, Warrell make a, made a charge out of his goal, and he certainly looked like he would have been second best if it wasn't uh, for the timely intervention there by, by James coming across. And uh, the game's getting a bit stretched, certainly from a Malik perspective. I'm looking at the middle of the park, and uh, they're throwing so many bodies forward. There's, there's nothing there. They have to be careful of this space side team in transition. Because they're capable, certainly capable, with the likes of Daniel. Duncan. 
He's found some space now, Matthews. Will exploit that space. He's got support on both sides, and he, well, it's going the individualistic route yet yeah, again. And again, it's it's a poor decision. You're 40 yards out, driving at the back four. Players available and, and various sides. As we take a look at the space side player, that's uh, on the ground. No one's noticed that yet. Uh, play has continued on. Never really got up after the corner. Went down awkwardly. Yeah. It is George. Play will continue before eventually being waved to the attention of the referee. Did fall awkwardly after the corner, George. Yeah. I think from a Malik perspective, they may feel aggrieved that the whistle was blown because Speyside had a chance to kick the ball out and they didn't. But uh, that play has been on the ground for quite some time. I think it's really stick or twist now for for Malik if they want to come away with three points. They are throwing a lot of bodies forward. And again, James, they have to be able to keep the back door shut. Well, a win would certainly do well for Speyside. It would put them level on points with Malik. Just one win so far in their three matches that they've played. Malik have been able to produce two wins from their three. So both teams have had their ups and their downs in this competition so far. Well, the good news is that George is back on his feet. And the play will continue. Well, we look at the numbers at the bottom of your screen and possession heavily lopsided in favor of Malik. Pass completion, well, it's not sure favors any of the teams really. Well, another player in yellow. Sees the turf and, uh, well, it does look in a bit of bother. Yeah, I think uh, the knees may have collided there. It looks like uh, Williams. Yeah, Eastman. Eastman, yeah, Eastman may have collided with uh, one or two play one of, one of the Malik players. And uh, when we came into this fixture, James, there was a lot of talk about. Uh, Malik's potential. I mean, it's safe to say that uh, we haven't seen it today. And uh, yes, teams do have their days where they may be off color a bit. Do they have the talent within the squad? Yes, I would think so. There's certainly quality in there, but they just haven't been able to show it. We've seen flashes, but we certainly haven't seen it consistently. That's what they've been good at, James, winning the football back. Yeah, they've done that well. And they've also done that really well, giving it away. So and that sums out the game. It. Yeah, all dunks, you're correct. They've made some really poor decisions today. They shot when they should have passed. They passed when they should have shot. And uh, they've given the ball away, clearly, on a couple of occasions. Well, this time, giving away a foul. And uh, George will be one of the targets that Daniel and company will have to aim at. He's back on the field now after receiving treatment. Eastman will take charge of this. Pushing bodies forward, they would like to get a Kim leading goal. And uh, well, wasn't far off that time, was he? He thinks he was much closer than it looked. Malik, uh, certainly, as you mentioned, team uh, to have uh, some individual talent. Haven't shown it consistently 
enough, I imagine many fans would think today. They certainly produced uh, top players in their time. Of course, uh, you would have played for Malik, one of five players on the Trinidad and Tobago past World Cup squad. Think of the likes of Arnold Dwarka, Sean David, Gary Glasgow, Cohen Jamad coming from Malik, Jason Scotland. I, I would put forward an argument that uh, Malik has produced the most national team players of any other school. Nicaragua East as well might be. I'm, yeah, will be up there. Uh, certainly the most players at the World Cup 2006. Well, this is good. And Nick Matthews just couldn't get his head on it. Maybe another chance and uh, another chance goes to begging. Again, another poor decision. I just wondered, James, if uh, the substitute there, Manswell, sorry, not Manswell, but uh, if the substitute Bradshaw had uh, taken a spill in his maneuvering through the box, that may have been uh, certainly one that that man in your picture would have to take a look at. To mention, five of a World Cup squad for Trinidad and Tobago did come from Malik. Of course, uh, you, Brent, the man who got us to the World Cup, Dennis Lawrence, Otis Whitley, Denzel Theobald. Just wonder what the school program might have looked back, back then. Kenneth Franco, during his era, they certainly produced a lot. And of course, uh, Keith Lucloy as well, instrumental in that uh, Malik program. Jason Scotland was the other Malik boy. Yeah, certainly. That uh, was part of the World Cup squad. So certainly a school of uh, immense pedigree. And uh, it's uh, really about getting back to where they were. Certainly a lot of firsts as well. Think of Hayden Tinto. He was the first local to score at the Azteca. Yeah. Malik boy. Devon Jocelyn, who's really been a legend on the local league circuit with the defense force. I think uh, Barry Swift was the first uh, Trinidadian player to play in the MLS. Played for New York Metro Stars. Well, he signed on the Project 40. Jason Scotland, the first Trinidad and Tobago player to top score in the English division, championship division as well. Yeah. So a lot of firsts for Malik. I'm sure they would like to get their first, ti their first title in a long, long time this season. At the moment, space side making it incredibly difficult. Somebody would need to put their hands up at the moment because this could be it. It's level and, well, it's goalkeeper on spot. Well, he was desperate to get on top of the ball, James. And uh, Ronaldinho. Yeah. And in trying to execute, I think he may have threw himself off a bit. I just wasn't able to get uh, the kind of purchase on the ball that he would want. Certainly, I think the right idea, but it was always a difficult skill. I think if it's one thing, Speedside will definitely be the happy of the teams today with the point. Yeah. Traveled a long way to come to Trinidad and uh, they'll be happy to head back to Tobago with that point. But against a team that uh, that was heavily favored to win this one. Well, it's not over yet, but uh, so far they've done well. Well, here's Duncan. Oh, he's done well to get past Eastman. Can he make the right decision? This has Matthews. to be, oh, I tell you what, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nikolai Nairon right on spot. Yeah, and uh, once you make that sort of challenge, you do put yourself in the questioning. And uh, again, question marks on whether or not, James, that should have been a penalty. Well. He did stop his progress, and, and uh, that alone... He impeded his progress using his, uh, of course, his body in it. I think the question is, uh, James, is whether or not Matthews was in control of the football. Did he still have possession or control? And I would say yes. 
Well, it will be Akeem James from the spot. Whoa, he's fluffed it. Can't say he didn't have the opportunity. But that opportunity is gone. Smiles on the faces of the boys in yellow. Disappointment from the ones in blue. Oh, Cookie certainly has crumbled. This match and how all the captain is at the heart of it. But certainly what a moment. Tell you, it's, uh, it's been a difficult match. Certainly had an opportunity to put, put his name in the headlines as Duncan makes his way out and in comes Hines. Kyron Hines replacing Duncan in the final few minutes of this match. Certainly is a difficult match selecting any one standout player. And, uh, yeah, well, that's really naughty by the substitute. I think uh, from certainly from a space side perspective, it would have to be that man, Daniel. He's uh, He's been really good. Yeah, certainly him. Quashi also is another name that perhaps can... But you're right, uh, in terms offensively, the space side, Daniel has been everything. Yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, been an, uh, certainly a pocket full. But I think uh, if Malik is to go on and win this, then you may have to look at it like at uh, Samuel or oh, oh, Matthew. Well, the captain missed the chance to give his team all three points. We'll have another opportunity to lead them here with this set piece. Well, it's in the area and the good goalkeeping from that man again. Well, what a match. Hasn't been the best match in terms of quality, but it has produced moments. And a foul in a dangerous area. Good area. Had he gone past him, it certainly would have been curtains. And Batiste taking one for the team. So it will be an opportunity from just about 20 yards for Malik to go in search of a potential game winner. Speyside have done well enough to keep them out for much of the match. And uh, certainly love to head back to the sister aisle with the point that they have. It's uh, certainly been all Malik in the second half. It's been really one-way traffic. I can't even think of any sort of action going towards Worrell's 18-yard box or surroundings. I'm well, not sure. Well, I'm happy the referee blew the whistle because I wasn't sure if that set play would have had any sort of joy. So it will be Jill on Matthews. I think and he's going to go for it, yeah, James. I was just about to say that. Well, Nikolai Nairon is unhappy by something that he's seeing. Jalen Matthews has the go-ahead. Can he put his team ahead? Well, can't. Find the right side of the upright. And, uh, well, they're making more moves. They're tossing in the kitchen sink now, Malik. Going to their bench, and they will call upon... Well, Oba Samuels is being replaced. And they have uh, instead decided to re rely on this man coming in, Antonio Sealy. 
will make his appearance. Jaden Wilson will also have an opportunity to see out the remaining few minutes for Speyside. He's got one job really to ensure that keeps Malik off the score sheet. Well, the clock is ticking down, and well, Malik again go in search of that elusive game winner, and again the space side denies them. Yeah, and that's an advert to their downfall. They've just not been able to execute in the final third, James. And when they've gotten into situations, they either overhit the pass, make wrong decisions and certainly take themselves out of the dangerous situation that they put themselves in. Well, this could be one here. Well, this could be it. Kev, this could be it. That's a good save. Excellent save from the goalkeeper. Makaya Taylor that's coming up skill. big, but Ronaldinho has kept it alive. And a chance here for Malik. Silliness. Why is he trying an overhead kick? Again, another chance. Gonna begging. They're going to look back at this, James, and have nightmares because they've gotten into areas and they just haven't been able to execute. Well, we've had a good look at that. Four minutes is all that will remain at the moment. They're holding firm, Speyside secondary. I think they've done well defensively in the second half, particularly Speyside. Well, Malik will seek to test that. Sing. Away by Kwashi. And he will come again. This time. Can't get it away as George helps out. Inside that four minutes of added on time. Just Three minutes remaining. Well, this certainly will be something special if Space Side can find a way to get all three points, steal it at the death. Certainly have the wherewithals to do it. It's Eastman. Speyside in search of a winner. Oh, they found it! They found a potential winner. Speyside secondary. Might be George who would have gotten the last touch. Might have come up the defender. Who cares? They're 2 1 up. Well, when the ball came into the box, I was looking at the, the Malik players and they seemingly was still trying to make adjustments and uh, because of that everyone rushed to the football which caused the calamitous coming together and eventual ball spilling over into the into the goal what heartbreak here for Malik really dominated this uh, second half and despite all of that domination they stay in defeat in the face well, Orlando Jack has been brought in Replacing Daniel. And uh, certainly going to try to hold on to all three points against the odd space side. Certainly a lift in urgency from Malik, but if not found a way past the yellow shirts of space side, and what a turn of events. Certainly a plot twist not many would have predicted. In search of something special. Yeah, and that's, that's not going to help you. That's not it. You have uh, six blue shirts in the area waiting on a delivery. And instead, he decides to shoot from 40 yards out. It's been really disappointing for Malik. Certainly, they've played well enough to win the game. 
and all within their arsenal of, of, of course, uh, things that have gone on in this game. They also missed a penalty. So when they look at it, really and truly, James, they have no one else but themselves to blame. Well, it's as if they go on to lose. Still have a couple minutes left on the clock. Just over 10 seconds of time That's a to oh, try to find an equaliser. Again, dribbling when they should be passing. Well, here's Ronaldinho Richards. Lost his footing. Singh. Maybe the last moment of the game for Malik. Speyside holding on. Three points are just a few seconds away from being all theirs. Or maybe Malik could cause something here. That's a poor cross at the end. And it will be Speyside secondary who will rejoice. All three points taken on the road. Malik secondary will crumple in disappointment as the boys from Tobago well, they've done the job. Against the odds, they've been able to topple Goliath. And they will take three points back to the Sister Isle for their second win of the competition. Well, I can say that they deserved it. And of course, the man of the match, Daniel, is a part of that crew. Broken hearts of the Malik secondary side. But, uh, James, when you reflect on it, they really let themselves down because they, they created well more than enough chances to win this football game, inclusive of a penalty kick. So we start to reflect the possession, domination. We looked at it early in the second half. They were 63% in front of possession. But that doesn't matter. What matters... Is what you see on your screen, Speyside High School against the odds taking a 2-1 win over Malik Secondary. Spoke about the numbers, Brent. Let's take a look at those numbers as the sun set, Stanley points set with them. Well, a remarkable 17 shots by Malik. And look at that figure, James. Six of those, six alone on target after 17 shots. Seven for Speyside, three on target. Ten fouls collectively. Uh, did have some of its moments, and so we saw four yellow cards split between the two. And, of course, uh, offsides one, corners three and four, respectively. And the possession chart, heavily, not heavily in favor of Malik, but slightly uh, as it relates. But I think the quality and what they did with the possession is really the downfall of Malik today. When you look at that scoreline, I think from a Malik secondary perspective, they should have done a lot better with the opportunities that they had. What do you think Speyside did to win this match? Well, I think they rode their luck at, at, at some points. But uh, I think more importantly, from a defensive standpoint, the likes of uh, Kwashi uh, and, of course, uh, Baptiste and Johnson slotting in to make it a back five was resolute and strong. Uh, and they did win their fair challenge, the fair amount of challenges. Well, certainly will be a special moment for Speyside to take back. Of course, they've got a holiday. And, uh, well... Might as well, an extra day to celebrate. As we send it down to Hans De Fiends, who's standing by with our man of the match, Daniel. James, I'm here, Omar Daniel, man of the match. Congratulations, scored his first goal for the season against St. Anthony's College earlier this week. Was this the, res the result that you expected today and how happy are you? Well, I am glad to see that we win this game. We are very happy we work hard for it. The last game was unfortunate, yeah. but to came out this one and, and do better. Who you all have coming up next? Who do you all face next? We are to face... I'm not sure. All right, well, don't worry. We'll keep you updated with the fixtures. And if you're trying to find out what's happening with the fixtures with the Secondary Schools Football League, check out the Sportsmax app. We have all the information. We will keep you updated. What can we expect from you for the rest of the season? Well, we can expect greatness. That's Greatness. That's, yeah. All right, Omar Daniel, congratulations to you. You are man of the match today. We now get ready for Brent Sancho. He's with the coaches. Thank you very much, Thank you very much Hans. Of course, uh, I'm now joined by the head coach of Malik Secondary. Coach, your assessment of the 90 minutes. Too confident. You go in and it's too confident and the, the work rate wasn't as how it's supposed to be. The lack in the second, the second ball. 
Well, of course, you created enough chances to go on and win it. Sucker punched at the end, eventually losing all three points. How do you build back and, of course, get the team back up to spirits moving into the rest of the fixtures? Well, you know, as I tell you guys, it's only business. You know? So, we just dust my pants, get up again next day, and, you know, we go again. We fight another day. Thank you, know? you, thank you very much, Coach, and all the best. Thank you. Coach, well, well, manager joined here, but the manager of Speyside, of course, uh, coming away with all three points at the end of the day, a big day for Speyside. Yes. Certainly. Your assessment of what transpired. Um, we came here with a mission and a game plan. We wanted to move up the table. We always believe that we have a bunch of talented players who could bring it home and they did exactly what the coach would have asked of them. So couldn't be more, more proud of what the guys did. Well, in the build-up to this game, we spoke about how difficult it is for teams to come from Tobago Certainly. and play on the day. Yes. Can you, of course, tell our viewers what, uh, of course, your day was like coming here to Serpentine Road? Yes, certainly. And um, most of us were up at around 2 a.m. because we live in the eastern side of the island, Charlottesville, most of the students and space side and environs. And it's challenging. We came down on the boat and we were housed here, but... At the end of the day, I always tell my players that you you rise despite your challenges and you go forward. So yes, there are challenges, but we try to rise above it. But it's difficult. Wise words from the manager. Thank you. Thank you very much and all the best all for the, the rest best. of the season. <laughs> Well, they definitely made it through the difficulty. Speyside High School, Tobago, coming away with the victory against Malik Secondary. Two goals to one. Some people would say an unexpected result. But nevertheless, like we say, it's not about statistics. It's about the game on the day played on the pitch. This is where we wrap it up at St. Mary's Grounds in Trinidad and Tobago. Coming up in the Secondary Schools Football League, we get ready for our Mammoth East Zone Clash Up. Arima North Secondary going up against Sour North Secondary. We're going to be bringing you all the action live from Arima Velodrome. At full time, the score. Malik Secondary won Speyside High School taking that flight, landing that plane and going back with the victory. On behalf of the entire Sportsmax team, my name is Hans Devines. Thank you so much for viewing the Secondary Schools Football League Premiership Division. Welcome to SSFL Premiership Division.